You see that this is about life insurance. Don't move past this video because none of it has anything to do with shuffling off this mortal coil. This has everything to do with maximizing assets, creating tax-free strategies, and helping create generational wealth while you're in your working years only to spend all that money down and have it replaced when you do shuffle off this mortal coil. More to come, stay with the video, you'll enjoy it and you'll walk away with more education than you had before you came in. So today we're going to talk about the life stages of life insurance. A lot of people think that it's just for like mortgage protection or, you know, that it's real inexpensive and you can go get a policy real easy. I'm not saying that's not the beginning of it, but what I am saying is we're going to dig deep into an education on how to really kind of not only be able to protect from mortgages and protect from, you know, a premature death, of course, but also how to build out the insurance through, through a process and over the years that can not only create leverage, liquidity, and control, give you the ability to get multiple uses of each and every dollar, and put yourself in a position to take advantage of things that are on discount because you plan properly along the way. So here it is. Why do people buy life insurance? Listen, typically, if you own the home, you're gonna have fire insurance, right? You don't wanna, you wanna make sure that that fire insurance covers the full, not half, the full replacement of the home itself. If we look at life insurance, it offers financial protection for your family should anything happen to your life, let's say during the working years. You're, you're a husband and, and you make 200, 300 grand a year, you have three kids. You wanna make sure during that wealth accumulation phase, you have a death benefit of 20 times the amount of that income. Same thing if you're a wife or, or if you know, you're a single mom or single dad, whatever you're earning in an income, get a 20 factor when it comes to life insurance. I cannot tell you how many times that I see people either not have the right kind of insurance or the death benefit is way off. At the end of the day, the agent or the folks in this person's life didn't give them good information and kind of made life insurance a bad thing versus a good thing. But if you own a home and you want full replacement value of that house, I would do the same thing when it comes to life insurance. However, there also exist ways that life insurance can offer financial freedom without anyone having to die, which we'll get into. But when you look at your first policy as a matter of personal responsibility, it's a good idea to get some form of life insurance once you enter adulthood. Get a term policy, get an inexpensive term, but make sure that once you get a medical where your blood spills, that you have the ability to, without having another medical done, convert your term into whole life over the years. This is usually in the form of term. The initial kind of insurance you should get, my first policy of the 14 that I own, was a term policy and it's very affordable and it's based, you can pay it on a monthly basis, like all insurance, quarterly or annually, but sometimes this is $100, 200 $300 a month if it's the right level. And if you're looking for just a death benefit of 100 or 200 300,000, it's very, very inexpensive. But as you begin to climb the scale of economic financial freedom, and as you begin, your kids get older, your business gets stronger, because now if you're a business owner, well, wait a minute, my business also needs to be replaced, not just my life's value to my wife and my kids. So as you move up in the world, once you have a steady income of around, and it could be any number for you, I don't know if it's gonna be 200 grand, 500 grand, or a million, but as you begin to move up, you're able to set money aside for saving and investing. It's time to really convert that term into whole life or just go in and buy a whole life policy. Cash value policies offer competitive interest rates, tax benefits, and potential for leverage, meaning as you're building up the cash value in these policies, you can leverage them and use that money for other investment opportunities. I wouldn't suggest to do it um, if you're gonna go on a European vacation, but listen, if you're a smart business person and somebody has a, a company that you wanna be a part of where you're either gonna come in and, and consult for equity, that's one thing that doesn't cost you any money, you begin to train their sales team and get a piece of the profits, or if you wanna do debt for equity, where you're gonna give a loan out for a business, and then all of a sudden, your money inside your policy could be earning a rate of return while you leverage it out to this business. You could do it when you, you finance your own debt, whether it's your cars, even real estate if the policies get big enough. But leveraging your policy with cash value life insurance transforms into growth-oriented financial asset. Meaning, if I had a brokerage account, right, and it was diversified, I'm talking ETFs, that were global, ETFs that were intentional or international, I should say, ETFs that were small cap, mid cap, large cap, all the different value and all the different growth stocks, I can only leverage 50, maybe 60% of that. If I had a bond portfolio, I could only, I could only leverage maybe 50, 60, maybe 65%. However, 
your cash value could be leveraged dollar for dollar. In other words, if you have 100,000 in cash value, the insurance company may, le- may allow you to leverage up to 95% of it, but that money is so powerful, and if you wanna know why, just go look at tier one capital at the banks, because that's where all their main money is in these bank-owned life insurance policies because of the way they leverage it. Policy loans offer tax-free cash quickly with flexibility payment terms coming back in, and you could use them like your own personal bank. You may hear people on YouTube talk about become your own bank. What they're really saying is if you overfund, well, we overfund policies, but some people don't. But if you overfund the policy, you can leverage that out right away. Example, let's say your premium is 4,000 a month. We call that baseline savings. And let's say you want to dump 200,000 in. You make your first premium payment of 4,000. You do an unscheduled dump it of 200,000. You need the right company. You could borrow 180 of that 200 within 21 days and go put that into a rental piece of real estate where your rent is going to pay that back and really be able to create that multiple rate of return between two asset classes. And by the way, your cash value insurance is not exposed to the stock market going up or down or real estate going up and down. There is interest rate exposure. However, the lagging of that is really kind of neutralized with the dividend portion of these policies with these mutual life insurance companies. But how do policy loans work? Here's a quick couple of examples. You have, you could do it to start a business. I just talked about that. You could do it to finance your own debt. You could do it to buy real estate. You could do it where you're going to have a tax-free consumer loan where you're a hard money loan, you're a hard money lender to someone that wants to buy real estate and you get to own a piece of that real estate if they don't pay it back. And, and you could use that as a mortgage down payment on any of your other investments. You always want to be able to plan with the end in mind. Life insurance as part of an estate plan is the ultimate tax-free way to transfer wealth to your beneficiaries. And what that's basically saying is make sure you put the, the insurance inside a trust, but be careful. You don't have to run and do it right away because you're going to get an estate attorney say, listen, um, you know, that life insurance is going to jack up your death benefit. And the answer it is, however, if you're a married couple, you have time to put it into the trust unless you die together. Statistically, that's like almost impossible because when you have the unlimited marital deduction in your favor, Whoever the surviving spouse is gets everything tax-free, and it's only the death of the second spouse. Once that happens, the estate taxes kick in. Now, if you're divorced already, you might want to put it into a trust, but don't just go put it into a trust because somebody said so that has a CFP license next to them because at the end of the day, the unlimited marital deduction can be in your favor if, in fact, you're leveraging your policy for other business opportunities. And yes, there is language inside these trusts, health, education, maintenance, and support, that would allow you to do this, but not to the tune if it was what if it was just an individually owned policy. That's a different argument for a different day. You could get five people on each side that are going to disagree and agree. It still comes down to understanding the statistical chances of both spouses dying if you're not divorced, and at the end of the day, what that would look like to the surviving spouse when, in fact, they would get everything tax free under the unlimited marital deduction. Both the policies, cash value, and death benefit are non-taxable assets. It could gross up the estate though. They can even be rolled into a separate trust to avoid these estate taxes, absolutely. But once again, I wouldn't do it just right away just because some attorney said so or some CFP said so because they have their playbook, but that doesn't mean it's the right playbook if you're an entrepreneur. If you're conservative, the answer is yes. Anyway, you wanna plan the future but live in the present. What I mean by that, look man, at the end of the day, if you are constantly in the space of leverage, liquidity, and control, asset diversification, entrepreneur, where there's opportunity, entrepreneurs, there's opportunities all over the place. And entrepreneurs never try and say, okay, I'm going to do this next or that next. When things come to them, they begin to process the information and see, in fact, where that could fit for them to, to make some good monetary decisions and then put money back into their pockets where it belongs and also give people jobs and create an economic environment that's good for all the people that are tied with them, typically, not all of them, but typically. Anyway, if you wanna learn more about this, go ahead and click the link below. One of the team members here at Epic will take you through everything I just said. Put, they'll talk to your estate attorney, they'll talk to your CFPs, they'll talk to your trust officers and your fiduciaries. It's important to understand what questions to ask and also how to put all these plans in place. And thanks for checking us out. Once again, don't forget to click the link below.